Thank you both for joining me this afternoon to talk about Women's Sports Leadership Academy or WISLA as it's more affectionately and commonly known as. Um, as you know, Leading Edge, uh, we're delighted to partner with you for the 2022 event last year. For me, it was one of my personal highlights of the year. Um, so we're even more excited and delighted to continue that journey with you this year um, and support the 2023 event. Um, so just in terms of intros and context, Jordan, I'm going to come to you first. Um, maybe you can just give a bit back, bit of background on your role um, in Whistler, because I think you've been involved from the outset and just give people a bit of an overview about what Whistler is about. Sure, yeah. So my name is Dr. Jordan Matthews. I'm a senior lecturer in sport management, sport development and esports at the University of Chichester. And I'm also the program development officer of the Women's Sport Leadership Academy. So I predominantly coordinate the annual residential weeks that are hosted at the university every year. Uh, put simply, WISLA provides unique development opportunities for women leaders from around the world to step up, take the lead and make an impact. In the 1980s, it became more known that women were significantly underrepresented in the senior decision making positions of sport and that has barely changed since. Um, since then though various different efforts have been attempted to try to address the imbalance and though some have seen very gradual mild advances most have actually worked to continue this underrepresentation. So in 2014 Wisler was created um, to try and change this situation by providing something different in the sport leadership and development space. And since 2014, annual residential weeks have occurred with women based in over 60 countries. Uh, bespoke programmes delivered under licence have also occurred in Botswana, South Africa, Zimbabwe, New Zealand and elsewhere in the UK. So in total, nearly 400 women have completed a Whistler programme. Thanks, Jordan. And it's like incredible, like 400 female leaders across the globe um, is a pretty impressive um, stat over that period of time. And I know the fantastic work that it's done and the impact it's had um, for those female leaders. So Farah, like welcome. Um, like you were part of the 2022 cohort and um, that we delivered last year. Do you want to just give a little bit of an intro and background in terms of your role and why you wanted to be involved in Whistler? Absolutely. Thank you for um, allowing me to um, share my experience as well, Sarah. My name is Farah Gorsi. I am the ICC, the International Cricket Council Regional Manager for the Americas. Um, previously, um, we've had women in ICC, Holly Colvin, Jane Livesey, who have been part of this programme and the recommendations uh, and the experience they've taken away from Whistler um, has been quite astounding to hear. Um, and when I did hear about this from my senior manager, um, I was keen to get involved. Um, I reviewed the programme. I liked everything that it was looking to offer the participants. Um, and so I, I, I applied. Um, and unfortunately, I got through. Um, and from then on, it's been an absolute game changer for me in my role um, as a regional manager that manages the growth and development of, cr of cricket in 16 countries in the Western Hemisphere. So Farah, you are obviously part of that 2022 cohort, which had a rich um, and diverse group of individuals from different backgrounds and cultures. So what was it like for you experiencing that and learning from that diversity? It was absolutely key to the whole residential week to be able to um, surround myself from women around Africa, Asia, Europe, um, and myself from Americas. Um, there were some unique learnings from peer to peer. There was wide range of discussions where there's some similar similarities in the jobs that we do, but how we go about achieving our objectives um, in terms of people's religions and environments as well. It was interesting to learn, although we all worked in sports development and similar roles, of how people would, how the women would utilise the resources, minimal resources, and still be able to achieve um, through their own work, through their own styles of the job they were undertaking, um, key learnings to take away from these women uh, and how strong they were as well um, in their diverse cultures and how their value, they were very much value driven. Moving on to 
like the actual residential week um like you know from my perspective it's it was fantastic to be involved in designing and facilitating that so Jordan you know from your perspective as like the program lead and driving Whistler what's some of the outcomes um, that you're hoping for people to get from that Whistler residential week? Um, um, to re well we've revised the aims of the residential this week so we term these objectives as the four C's um, the first one being to support the development of leadership competencies, the second to try and encourage the confidence of female leaders, the third to understand the organisational and cultural contextual awareness, and the fourth being to engage um, with a commitment on behalf of the employers. So we know that women encounter issues and barriers to advance within systems of sport leadership. That's been widely understood and researched, but crucially, what we do not aim to fix, upskill or teach women because we know that women have already got the skills and the knowledge to excel um, they've they've got to these amazing positions already. Um, so instead, we try to challenge the participants to really think about what leadership means to them, uh, what they want to achieve, how they can go about doing it and also provide some insight into tackling problematic systems or cultures that they may encounter. So this is achieved via workshops, physical activity, peer support sessions, and also reflection workshops uh, built by yourselves at Leading Edge. And that means that it's a very, very personal learning experience within a safe and trusting environment. And that helps to um, not only produce lots of great knowledge during the week, but it also helps to facilitate going back to the organisations where these women work and having an impact and influencing there as well, and then further encouraging um, support thereafter. Thanks, Jordan. And I think that's um, like one of the things that really excited me about Whistler was about the reach um, and the various different backgrounds, um, experiences and cultures that people come from when they attend Whistler. So would you mind just expanding around, you know, what that looks like from a Whistler perspective and, and why that's important? Yeah, absolutely. So there's three things that spring to mind here. Um, the first is facilitators. The second is focusing on a broad demographic and trying to get that to Whistler. And then thirdly, it's also being inclusive of the sport for development industry and sector as well. So this is generally one of the central features of the programme. We know that sport and its education and its leadership has long been accused of being white, male and Western dominated. And we recognise this when we built the programme originally. So we are acutely aware that the first few programmes were designed and led by white Western women. However, we soon started inviting and supporting graduates to return to the programme as facilitators. So this was firstly to try and ensure some sustainability of the programme. Uh, secondly, it trains these women to return uh, to their home countries and deliver to um, their own programmes within their own organisations, for example, and their local communities. And thirdly, um, it helps to just diversify the delivery of the programme, given that these women offer their own insights and their own additions to the programme. Um, so we know that at least seven facilitators have come from Africa uh, back to Whistler. Uh, as part of the facilitator and delivery team, for example. Um, so we also know that by throwing the net wide, we've been able to welcome an amazing diversity of leaders from different ethnicities, religions, cultures and backgrounds. And we know from speaking to graduates that this is one of the defining features of the programme. Um, so we know that for the 2023 programme, we've had applications from women based in every continent and over 30 different countries. And I guess the final point just to add here is that in 2014, we recognised that sport leadership development programmes existed, but were deficient in a few ways. And one particular avenue we wish to explore a bit further was the growing sport for development, also known as sport for change uh, sector and industry. So whereas uh, sport leadership programmes were for people working in sport to develop their sport, whether that be at participation or elite performance levels, um, there have been very few efforts to try and incorporate those who work within the sport for development sector, despite its rapid growth. And so for our residential week, we, also, we always try to ensure that at least a quarter of the cohort are from a sport for development background. And that means that WISDA provides a very unique environment for sharing knowledge about this sector 
and providing insight into how sport can impact people's lives away from just recreation, physical activity or even winning medals. Um, and I guess the final point just on that is that we were nominated for a Beyond Sport Award, which is based upon the Sport for Change projects in 2019 because of our work in this regard.